In a world grappling with evolving climate change challenges and the environmental toll of fossil fuels, nuclear fusion stands out as a potential solution where we are able to exploit the insanely high energy density without producing the dangerous products from nuclear fission. Yet, current fusion methods require ridiculously high temperatures of 100 million degrees Celsius. Through catalysis, however, we can make this process somehow happen at room temperature, the notorious cold fusion. Formally discovered in 1956, muon catalyzed fusion is one way, and has been demonstrated experimentally, albeit not without challenges. Let's dive into how this works. Starting first with fusion, the process powering the stars relies on being able to force two smaller nuclei together against the Coulomb repulsion of the nuclei to make a bigger nucleus, and releasing energy in the process. Hydrogen features in the most promising fusion reactions owing to its small size, low nuclear charge and general abundance. Typically we try to fuse deuterium with deuterium, an isotope of hydrogen with one neutron, or deuterium with tritium, which has two neutrons. Tritium, however, is radioactive and not abundant. Given the high energy needed to force even these nuclei together, we can consider catalyzed fusion, like muon catalyzed fusion. Muons are subatomic particles 207 times heavier than the electron. The process involves replacing electrons in certain atoms with muons, forming muonic atoms. With muons' greater mass, Newton's law of gravitation correctly predicts that muons orbit to the nucleus much more closely, roughly 200 times closer. Muonic deuterium, therefore, has a smaller electron cloud than ordinary deuterium, allowing the fusing atoms to get closer together, lowering the Coulomb barrier. This means the attractive, short-ranged, strong nuclear force can overpower the repulsive electrostatic force at normal conditions, like at room temperature. After fusion, the muon is released, allowing it to catalyse many more fusions. This might all sound good, but there are a number of technical issues, like the short lifetime of muons, about 2.2 microseconds, so they need to catalyse fusion reactions quickly before they decay. Muons can also get stuck to the helium nucleus product, disabling the muon. This limits the amount of fusions a given muon can effectively catalyse to around 150 before it gets stuck or decays. This in turn gives 2.7 giga electron volts of energy generated per muon catalyst. Whilst numbers vary, it takes around 5 to 10 giga electron volts to produce a muon, hence reaching break even, let alone an energy gain for commercial power production, is tricky. This is the other technical issue, producing and maintaining enough muons in the fusion chamber for effective catalysis is energy intensive. Muons are typically made via high energy particle accelerators, making mesons, like pions and kaons, which decay into muons, albeit with potentially low yield and high energy inefficiency from numerous inelastic collisions. So how can we improve all this? Well, we can find ways to increase the number of fusions per muon, which would mean reducing the likelihood they stick to helium nuclei, getting the muon unstuck from the helium after it sticks, or increase a muon's lifetime. All of these are tricky to address owing to the intrinsic properties of particles. Another approach is to harness the kinetic energy of the waste products. We can install a lithium blanket which captures neutron reaction products and breeds tritium with heat release. This could in theory bump up energy production to 3.9 giga electron volts per muon. Alternatively, we can reduce the energy needed to create a muon through technological intervention. This has all been probed to limited degrees of success over the past 70 years. Of course, if all this is hypothetically solved and a sizeable net energy gain is economically produced, we could be in business. Embracing chemical and reactor engineering, a futuristic muon catalyzed fusion plant might look something like this. A module is used to generate muons, which is then passed through an injection system. Muons are then injected into a fusion chamber with deuterium. The deuterium can come from water, which contains a small amount of heavy water, D2O, and this can be separated via isotopic exchange or distillation, followed by electrolysis. 
Following nuclear fusion at room temperature, the tremendous amount of energy released is captured by a heat exchanger, after which it can be interconverted into a more convenient energy form. The usual safety and control systems would be set up around the plant too. So whilst muon catalyzed fusion has been demonstrated, it will not probably be powering up the grid in the near future. The prospect though of a clean, high energy density energy generation technology at normal conditions enabled by muons remains highly exciting, especially in the rundown to 2050 net zero. If you enjoyed the video or learnt something interesting, please don't forget to share, subscribe and sign up to Chemify's mailing list on the website.